Hi, this is Mrs. Hofkrat from the Morrison Mary Wiley Library, and I have another Caldecott book I'd like to share with you. This one was the winner in 1983, uh, and it is called Shadow. It was translated and illustrated by Marcia Brown. It's based on the French of Blaise Cendrars. Shadow. Have you ever thought about your shadow? What is a shadow? Maybe we'll find out. The eye has no shadow. All of the children of the moon and of the sun, the earth, the water, the air, the fire own no shadow. Shadow itself has no shadow. Shadow lives in the forest. It goes forth at night to prowl around the fires. It even likes to mingle with the dancers. Thus it is both prowler and dancer. But it is mute. It never speaks. It listens. It comes sliding right up behind the storyteller. Then when the last fire is out, it goes back to the forest. But Shadow does not sleep. It is always watching. If you open your eyes in your sleep, Shadow is there. He is already stolen back like a thief, and now it is spying on you. The eye has no shadow, but it sees Shadow stirring the embers until the log on the hearth crumbles without a sound and falls to Ash. Ash has no shadow either. That's why Shadow is blind, for his eyes are two small heaps of ash. And so when all the fires are out, Shadow is blind. He does not see a thing. It staggers about, arms stretched out, trying to grab, to hang on. Body dragging. It runs. It starts to fall. Bit Brent in two like a beggar. It reaches for a perch, a prop. But it does not cry out and calls no one. It has no voice. On its nightly path, it often gets bumped, gets torn, trips again and again. But each time sprawls its full length on the ground. But it does not cry out. It has no voice. Shadow is a fall. They say also that it is the mother of all that crawls, of all that squirms. For as soon as the sun comes up, here are the shadow people, breaking loose, unwinding, stretching, stirring, branching out, teeming like snakes, scorpions, and worms. That's why a person keeps an eye on his shadow when he wakes up and takes care not to step on it when he gets up. It could prick him or bite him. But Shadow says nothing. It has no voice. Shadow is frightening, but there's no need to fear. It is not death. That's clear, because it is there every morning and never says a thing, while death, when it comes, cries out. Besides, Shadow never asks for a thing. It has no hunger. Even so, watch out. For though Shadow has no voice, like the echo, it can cast a spell over you. For good or bad, it is a trickster. It laughs behind your back. It mocks you and makes a fool of you. Here it is in a mask. Mm. In the daytime, Shadow is full of life. It waves with the grasses, curls up the foot of trees, races with the animals at their swiftest, nestles behind the elephant's ear, perches on a stone, swims along with the fish. It follows man everywhere, even to war. Shadow is always shadow. It needs no ornament, no tattoo. The zebra shadow has no stripes. Shadow is magic. You had better not look at it too closely. For is it to the left or the right, before or behind, above or below? At noon, shadow is everywhere. In the evening, shadow spreads out. Not a hole that it does not fill, not a hump, not a mound that it does not double. It even sticks to your footprints. It lies down on the footpaths. It chokes all the roads. No one can pass, for no one can push it aside. It is so heavy. Yes, shadow is heavy when night falls. Neither the eagle nor the vulture can raise it. In vain they try to soar into the air. Their shadow flops this way and that like a clumsy bat and crashes so heavily to the ground 
that they, the mighty birds of the heavens, fall after it, worn out. No one can fight shadows. Go home, build a fire, behold once more shadow. What is shadow? In the crackling coals, is it the spark? Light up! The spark has no shadow, the eye has no shadow, but shadow is in the eye, it is the pupil. Every breath stirs it to life. It is a game, a dance. And that is the end of the book, Shadow. Hi, this is Mrs. Huffcutt. I've got another Calicut book to share with you from the Morrison and Mary Wiley Library. This was the Caldecott winner in the year 1975. It is called Arrow to the Sun, and it is based on a Pueblo Indian tale, and it was adapted and illustrated by Gerald McDermott. Long ago, the Lord of the Sun sent the spark of life to Earth. It traveled down the rays of the sun through the heavens and it came to the Pueblo. There it entered the house of a young maiden. In this way, the boy came into the world of men. That's him. He lived and grew and played in the Pueblo, but the other boys would not let him join their games. Where's your father? they asked. You have no father. They mocked him and chased him away. The boy and his mother were sad. Mother, he said one day, I must look for my father. No matter where he is, I must find him. So the boy left home. He traveled through the world of men and came to Corn Planter. Can you lead me to my father? he asked. Corn Planter said nothing, but continued to tend his crops. The boy went to the pot maker. Can you lead me to my father? asked the boy. Pot maker said nothing, but continued to make her clay pots. Then the boy went to arrow maker, who was a wise man. Can you lead me to my father? Arrow maker did not answer, but because he was wise, he saw that the boy had come from the sun. So he created a special arrow. The boy became the arrow. Arrow maker fitted the boy to his bow and drew it. The boy flew into the heavens. In this way, the boy traveled to the sun. Look at him traveling. When the boy saw the mighty Lord, he cried, Father, it is I, your son. Perhaps you are my son, the Lord replied. Perhaps you are not. You must prove yourself. You must pass through the four chambers of ceremony, the kiva of lions, the kiva of serpents, the kiva of bees, and the kiva of lightning. The boy was not afraid. Father, he said, I will endure these trials. There are the lions. There are the serpents. There are the bees. And there is the lightning. When the boy came from the keep of lightning, he was transformed. He was filled with the power of the sun. The father and his son rejoiced. Now you must return to earth, my son, and bring my spirit to the world of men. Once again, the boy became the arrow. When the arrow reached the earth, the boy emerged and went to the Pueblo. He has changed, hasn't he? The people celebrated his return in the dance of life. And that is the end of the 1975 Caldecott winner, Arrow to the Sun by Gerald McDermott. Thank you for listening.